So in addition to the workshops you are organizing, um, I also noticed that you address the life word of the people who are interested in history. So the um, non-experts where you try to get in contact with. And for example, you are doing reviews of well-known alternative history films and also novels. Mm -hmm. So what is your experiences when it comes to this with regards to your science communication? So I think uh, in the scientific community, these things are highly separated. Uh, so many also scientists who say, yes, I use alternative history to for my work. They say I absolutely have nothing to do with the literature. So they say, yes, our our work is to ask the questions. Um, but what the, the what if answers, the speculations, this is a part of the literature because we can I cannot speculate. Uh, mm -hmm. So they say this is highly, um, highly separated. But for me, it is also part of alternative history because many people know alternative history only via the literature. So I want to give them these articles about this literature, about the films. Uh, to say yes, um, this is literature, but what are the historical basis of the literature? So, for example, for one book I uh, had made uh, an article in the in October. It was uh, I think Swastika Night is the English uh, title of it from Catherine Burdekin where we have what if the Nazis had won the Second World War, and then what in the world? many centuries uh, later where um, where women are very very oppressed and um, the the nazis rule more of half of the world uh, it was a very good book because if you look at the historical fundamentals, it was written in 1937 or before the second world war also before the whole before most parts of the holocaust one could say and it was very good connected to the to one could one could know about the goals of the Nazis in this time and also about, for example, their image of what would what should, what should a woman be. So they had a very oppressed image of a woman, and these goes in. If you look at this uh, book with these historical fundamentals, you think have a new. Um, new view about this book and about also that it that is yes of course it is literature but it is also has its fundaments in the history in the real history mm -hmm. of the world so this is a book which was published before the war yes in 1937 ah, so okay. two years before the start of the second world war and in in this um, in, in in the book, you uh, get some sci uh, scenarios about the way women are treated in the Nazi Germany. Yes, you can say um, uh, in this book, uh, the women are only there to give birth to to the children of the men and nothing more. They were treated like they are treated like animals, more or less in this book. Um, but they say also in this book, yes, um, it was not that something that happened um, fast, but it was a development after the Nazis had won the, the Second World War, had, uh, had mm -hmm. world domination. And so for them, their ideology has developed also in this way. And this was, if you look at the fundamentals in the year, um, 1937, what was the image of the Nazis to a woman? Yes, it has. The main goal of a woman was to give birth uh, to the children of the uh, of the man. And mm -hmm. to to um, that is the main goal. Um, also not in such an oppressed way or uh, that they were treated like animals, like just like in uh, Catherine Burdekin's Swastika Night, but the main goal was more or less the same. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so, um, but what we can also say is that this kind of literature, alternative history literature, also bears the risk that um, the right wing populists are using it for their um, activities, basically. So when we see it as an opportunity, you also promote democratic skills and um, demo yeah, uh, you also try to foster democra democratic skills for the citizens. Yes. So Why is this I important think, uh, for you and how do you try mm -hmm. to differentiate yourself um, and your also your blogging or blog posts when it comes to these right wing populists? So I think the, the alternative history, I think, could be a very democratic method because I think there exists also the, the speech of a democracy, a democracy lives uh, from its alternatives or that there are alternatives they can exist. So in the in dictators, there is no alternative. You have oh, the, the dictator who says yes. This is the way and there are no alternative. And if you say there could be an alternative, you are getting killed in the worst case. So I think it is also very um, to offer the people. Yes, we have had always alternatives and it is not something wrong or something dangerous or what one could say in these times where people have many fears and so, so, so there is the image uh, nobody knows what will come in the future because we have no clear way what will go on. One could say with this methods, yes, that's not something dangerous or wrong. That's the normal way of the history. So also the people in the in the past, they had no clue what we have 10 alternatives of how the world can develop. We don't know which one is right, which one is wrong. That is no, the normal way. So I think that is uh, one thing to explain this method to these uh, to the people and to make it also clear um, that is that it's not to something to say yes we have one better alternative and that's the better way. Uh, uh, but these all these alternatives they have their advantages and the disadvantages so that is also at least a little bit more open and I think also more democratic and more realistic and also to to make a separation from the right wing populists with their fake news and their uh, something like that one would also say um, that this is not alternative history. If I say, yes, I have a fake news, then the people say, yes, that's the truth, the only truth, and there is no alternative for that. Um, as far as a democracy would say, yes, we have alternatives, and none of them is in the first place better or worse than the other. And so in my blog, I'm also communicating that I don't uh, want to do have to do anything with these right wing people to write it down that if maybe some people say yes, I think it would be a better world if the Nazis had won the Second World War that they can. Uh, one could say I don't know. I, I don't know a very polite way in, in English what they can do, uh, but I can say you're not you cannot stay on my block. Uh, you can go somewhere else, uh, but there is no place for such uh, things on, on my blog because that is a something where you can also show to the people, just like in Catherine Burdick in Swastika Night, uh, yes, uh, that is not a nice world if the Nazis had won the Second World War. Yeah. So, mm, so, so these, also are, these are the, the two the two different things I could say this, uh, that I communicate to the people. Yes, there is no place for right wing speculation in my blog and also that these right wing alternative scenarios or alternative facts uh, that they are more or less uh, false. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's important uh, that you also get in dialogue because these uh, information, they exist anyway. Um, in the for the citizens and this is why maybe it's also important that scientists try to approach these people also with this kind of literature um, to show that this is just literature and not 
uh, real yes. history or um yeah yes the, and that is uh, that is also that is sometimes it is not based on uh, professional sources and something like that or maybe that if the people say yes it would be better if some things happen one could say no we know the sources we can talk about it and if we look both at the sources we see a no, it wouldn't be better uh, only because uh, one alternative uh, could happen or something like that mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. What I learned today is that science communication is not only important for marketing reasons or for research reason, it's also important for yeah, promoting democratic skills for citizens and mm -hmm. also a kind of yeah, <laughs> courage a scientist should have when it comes to the social role in the society. Mm -hmm. So, um, empowering people, giving their knowledge about uh, what you are knowing and what you are researching about um, yeah, your science work. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Gladly.